I am looking to find. I am looking to find. And the altar is the weight of one. love it if you all would talk a little bit. Anyone want to share your first initial reaction um, with what you saw? Okay. At first, I didn't know you were part of the actual performance, but then as you walked around, I started to think about the circumference of the, the space in which you were walking and the completion of your journey back to the place you started. And then what I started to realize is that the purple represents royalty in some cultures, or most cultures. And then I had a hard time then figuring out the water. So then I said, okay, well the water, 70% of the land, 70% of earth is water, 30% land, 70% of the body is water, 30% flesh. So I figured you were one with the earth. But then I got thrown off when the staff. Now, sh the staff, of course, could be associated with the journey, but then it started to become something else as it laid idle for the duration of the performance. So I'm not sure what that meant. And then I couldn't remember what the color, uh, what is that? Turquoise blue. I, I wasn't sure what it represented. And then as you swim or as you were laying face down into the that, that color, I had a hard time understanding what that meant. So I understood the journey, and I understood the royalty, and I understood the water, but my question after all of that would be more so the performance and how it relates to all of the symbols, especially the staff. That's, that's, my, that's my take on it. I'm not gonna answer anything just yet. Okay. So we're gonna, gonna a few, a few, and that way she can sort of really discuss what the performance um, means, where, where it came from with her and what she was hoping to share. But again, and also remember, your interpretation is your interpretation. And so it's quite possible that you, that you were gifted and able to pull something out that, that you saw and experienced that may, may be different than what or be in addition to what she was trying to share. So just just keep that in mind. We're gonna hear and then we'll go over here. Mine is quick. You said a lot of things I was gonna say, but one thing I, I caught was the circles. Circles, circles, circles. Constant uh, rotation in the sense of water, how it transitions from a gas to a solid, back to a liquid. It has that that, that ability to do And I see how you went in a semi-circle, but it was revolving and then back. I just am trying to get this, get this idea of the circles. That's all I can see was circles, circles, circles. So I think it was a very nice performance, and I thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. I think the interpretation I got was, particularly from your movements, but also from the voiceover, when you, talk, you quote the statistics of um, water shortages, particularly that are, um, that are estimated in the next coming decades around the world. And I saw a real concern I, I, I saw intersectionality um, articulated between water shortages, um, um, food access, gender, family planning. I saw all those come together. Um, and I saw, like, in terms of you coming around the circle, I guess I interpreted that as, like, the whole world's connected. If you have a water shortage anywhere, that's going to affect not only things in that country, in that particular region, but it's going to affect the whole world because. The, wor it, the world's one big e ecosystem. 
so that's how I interpreted it. I was wondering if, if that was what you had in mind when you did the performance. Brother Yusuf. Um, I, I think that some of the things that possibly that came up for me were around um, where we are and where we're going as a society when, mm -hmm. as pertains to water. Um, and I think that some of the things that stood out for me were uh, commentary through uh, Ebony's movements um, about how we're, how we are, how they are, how we are going to be soon drowning in our lack of access to clean drinking water. So, yeah. Is there anyone else who would like to share? A little bit about what? Oh. Okay. Um, first and foremost, uh, thoroughly moved. Um, and as I continue to consider the piece <laughs> and, 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 and digest it all, um, I must say it reminded me of uh, Daniel Quinn's Ishmael uh, and this notions of returning back to a simpler ways, to a oneness with the universe, a oneness with the water, a oneness uh, with the water, uh, the deliberate simplicity, uh, very, very powerful, very powerful. Pantomime question over here about why did you pour the water on your head? So um, <laughs> I can read your lips. I love, I love that. I love how expressive you are. Stay that expressive in your own performance. And um, and I just want to say that for me it was urgent mm. and cleansing mm -hmm. and healing and graceful not just because every movement was necessary, but also because this narrative gives us a way to have grace with ourselves about how we unfairly used up all the water. Mm, yeah. right. So I thank you, I just thank you. Anyone else? So for me, I think that um, each detailed, intricate movement, um, I felt, but also um, the narration, the fact that it, to me it was very healing, very forgiving. She talked about what we are learning and how we are learning it, and it was all about learning through our bodies. So it wasn't about reading something in a book, it wasn't about you know, participating in the institution. It was about taking it, as, as Brother D said, taking it all the way back and learning through the bottoms of our feet. And um, water is something that is very precious, that we take for granted, that we hold as a commodity now, um, that we can pay for. And it's, it's actually natural. And it's, 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 it's a gift from the universe. We have absolutely no control over anything that happens with the, with the water that has been provided to us. Um, and so taking it back all the way to that basic, to, to the learning um, through our bodies and through our spirit is what's gonna help us again to learn and grow and appreciate what has been provided here to us. I, I don't think that reading about it in a book, about the shortage in a book, is what's going to move us to change what's going on in, in, with, with the society. And so I appreciated hearing over and over and over again, particularly about the feet. I wanted to kick my shoes off and just kind of dig my toes into the dirt and, um, and appreciate what is here that has been provided for us and appreciate it through my body. I 
I guess my uh, experience was sort of tempered by the fact that we were at a conference on the diaspora. So I started reading things then that had to do with experience that I've had in Africa and in this country. It had to do with ideas like Mami Wata. And I was thinking your name, Olokun, who is the god of the ocean. Uh, there's uh, Oshu, uh, there's Oya. Uh, there are different deities in Africa that all have to do with water. Uh, and they interact with other deities that have to do with other things, and they all have to work together to, to do things. And it's also water that brought the diaspora over here. So when you were walking across there, I was thinking of the Middle Passage. Uh, and uh, uh, many, many African traditions have uh, a ritual that's not unlike baptism. And so here, with drenching yourself in water, it was cooling, uh, but it was also jarring, but it also was cleansing and, and sort of like the Yoruba baptism uh, in, in a way. Um, and then also, I guess I was thinking about so many of the major cities in Africa were founded either on major rivers or because of locations of water, oases or whatever. So water is such a vital experience to all of us. And then on this side, uh, almost every major city in the United States mm -hmm. has something to do with water. Exactly. So I was reading all those diasporic things into it. Uh, Another thing that was really powerful um, was you kept mentioning the idea of their shape shifting, their shape shifting. But there was one particular time when, as the voice was saying, their shape shifting, and you began to, you know what I'm saying, shape very much so. And, and the idea of returning back uh, to the simplistic, to the earth, and to the water. And to me, with that conjured this idea of shape shifting, but you were shaking off the the current nonsense, you know, that would end the, the extra complicated, you know, the, the much to do and shaking that off in order to shape shift back into something, you know, say a more simple, more holistic, you know, I, that, was, that was really powerful. Kimber, um, and then Beth. I'm also really interested, I've been, um, after reading Audre Lorde's The Use of the Erotic, I'm interested in how the erotic plays through this, how sensation and pleasure and body and movement and fluid, how all of that plays through the piece as well. Speaking to that too in a way, I was also really deeply moved by the way your breath changed as you doused yourself with water and all the sobbing noises, but just the, the sounds of your breath and of your body um, in those moments were very powerful 